Happy Sunday, RP Kids. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for joining us again for another Radical Praise Kids ministry lesson. My name is KK, and we have another great lesson planned for you today. Yes, thank you, RP Kids, for joining us again on this Sunday. My name is Justin, and we can't wait to share our lesson with you today. We have reached the last Sunday in January, and we will continue with our theme for this month, A New Beginning. We've learned so much about God this month and his ability to give us new beginnings. Remember, RP Kids, that in our daily lives, we sometimes mess up. Sometimes we do things that are not pleasing to God. But the good news is that God offers us a chance after chance after chance. Okay, RP Kids, time to, for the trivia game. Let's see if you guys remember some of the things we discussed during our last lesson on our last three weeks. I love a good trivia game. Are you ready for the first question, RP Kids? Great. Here's the first question. Question number one. In our first lesson of the month, we learned about a man named Nicodemus and the conversation he had with Jesus late one night. What was the main point of that lesson? Is it A, it is easy to be thankful when times are good, but we must also be thankful in times of trouble? Is it B, we cannot see the kingdom of God unless we are born again? Or is it C, Jesus loves us and that helps us love others? Great job, RB kids. The answer is B. Time for question number two. In our second lesson, we discussed two women, a mother-in-law and her daughter, a daughter-in-law. Their story began with the deaths of their husbands and much sadness. They returned to the homeland of, a mother, of the mother-in-law where they were blessed to meet a man named Boaz, who, were, who was a good man. In the end, Boaz married the daughter-in-law and both women were blessed with a new beginning. What were the name of the two women? A, Rachel and Mary, B, Esther and Bathsheba, or C, Naomi and Ruth? Did you say Naomi and Ruth? You guys are doing great. Okay, time for the last question. Question three, in last week's lesson, we talked about a man named Job, who was righteous and godly. God allowed Satan to test Job. He lost all of his wealth, his children, and his servants were killed. And he delivered painful sores all over his body. Despite all of this, Job did not curse God. He remained faithful and continued to praise God. God was so pleased with Job that he restored all that Job had lost. What does the word restore mean? A, to do again either once or a number of times, or B, to give back someone or something that was lost or taken, or C, to adapt to a changing environment or situation. That's right. To restore means giving back to someone or something that was lost or taken. You guys did an awesome job with those trivia questions. Now it's time for our core values. We have our four core values. Each week we review our values and we want you to memorize them and discuss them with your family. The first time I want you to repeat after me. Are you ready? Our first value is to love God. God is love and we love God because he first loved us. Our second value is to love one another. If we truly love one another, then we will give our very best to ourselves, just as God did for us. Our third value is to respect one another. When we respect others, we accept them for who they are, even if they are different. We are all God's creation, and it's God's will for us to show respect to one another. Our fourth and final value is to believe that you have a purpose. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Okay, RP kids, let's say our values one more time. Number one, love God. Number two, love one another. Number three, respect one another. And number four, believe that you have a purpose. Great job, RP kids. Practice saying our core values during the week. Now it's time to show God just how thankful we are for all he has done for us and all he is doing for us and all he will do for us in the future. Everybody, let's stand up and get ready to praise him. I love to read the Bible. It is God's best word. I love to read the Bible. And this is what I So, where I read. 
Thank you, praise team. Now it's time for our memory verse for January. Our memory verse comes from 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. If anyone belongs to Christ, then he is made new. The old things have gone, everything is made new. Now let's repeat it, but this time you and KK repeat after me. If anyone belongs, if anyone belongs to Christ, to Christ, then he is made new. Then he is made new. The old things have gone. The old things have gone. And everything is made new. And everything is made new. Let's think about what this verse means. We know that God sent Jesus to earth to die for our sins on the cross. Jesus took on all of the sins of the world so that through him we can have eternal life. If we believe in Jesus and live our life for him, when God looks at us, he no longer sees the sins of the world. We are made new in his eyes and can enter the kingdom of heaven. When we accept Christ, our old way of life is going and our new life in him begins. RP Kids, now it's time for today's main lesson. As you listen to today's lesson, remember the main point. Jesus forgives you. Good morning, RP Kids. Today's lesson story comes from the book of John, chapters 18 and 21. These chapters discuss the events leading up to the crucifixion of Christ and the event that comes after his death on the cross. During his last meal with the disciples before he was arrested, Jesus warned the disciples about the death. One of his disciples, a man named Peter, declared that he would never leave Christ's side, but Jesus knew different. He told Peter that before the night was over, Peter would deny him three times. Let's watch our video lesson for today to learn all about this story. As Jesus spoke to his disciples for the last time, he explained that he would be taken from them to suffer and die. He warned them that the events about to happen would be so painful and so frightening that they would all run away and leave him to face these horrible things all alone. Peter, who had once claimed that Jesus was the Messiah, argued, Though the rest of them fall away, I will never leave you. But Jesus knew better. The truth is, Jesus said, you will deny me three times before the rooster crows in the morning. Just as Jesus said it would, the night turned to terror as he was taken away. Peter, trying to follow Jesus at a distance, crouched in the shadows to hide near a warm fire. A young girl looked in his direction and asked, Weren't you with Jesus? Peter responded harshly, I don't know what you mean. Peter quickly got up and rushed away. Later that night, another servant girl recognized Peter and announced, This man was indeed with Jesus. Peter denied it and said, I don't know the man. Another person standing nearby insisted, You are one of them. I recognize your accent. Peter, becoming more and more upset, cried out, Let me be cursed if I am lying to you. I do not know who you're talking about. When these words left his mouth, the rooster crowed. Remembering what Jesus had said, Peter began to cry bitter tears of hurt and regret. After the death of Jesus, the disciples were lost and confused about what to do. Peter was tired of sitting around feeling guilty, so he decided to do something he was good at, fishing. Peter told the others of his plan, and some of them decided to join his fishing trip. They fished through the night, but they caught nothing. Early in the morning, exhausted and disappointed, they finally gave up and headed back toward the shore. They rowed toward land, and as the morning light was just appearing, the disciples could barely make out what looked like a man standing on the shore. The mysterious figure called to them, Children, did you catch any fish? Puzzled, they answered the stranger, No. The man then said, Cast the net off the right side of the boat, and then you'll catch something. Shrugging their shoulders, the disciples did as the stranger suggested. The nets filled with so many fish, the men could not pull them all in. One of the disciples recognized who had been talking to them, 
and he cried out, It's the Lord! Peter was so excited, he jumped out of the boat, diving into the water to reach him. Once all the disciples made it to the shore, Jesus invited them to join him by the fire for a breakfast of fish. They talked and laughed together like they had done so many times before, except now the fellowship was much sweeter. Their hero and master had defeated death, and he was back to share the victory. When they had all finished eating, Jesus turned to Peter and asked him, Do you love me? Peter replied, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus asked again, Do you love me? Peter replied the same, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. When Jesus asked Peter a third time if he loved him, a feeling of sadness washed over Peter. He had failed in his love before when he denied Jesus. What could he say now that would prove any different? But he did love Jesus, so he responded, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus' death on the cross had shown Peter what sacrificial love looked like. Peter knew now that his life was not his own, but that it had been bought with a price. Peter was transformed. Knowing he was ready to love fully, Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Although Peter loved Jesus, he was afraid, and this fear caused him to deny Jesus three times. As soon as the last denial left his lips, the rooster crowed three times. The Bible says in Luke 22:61 that the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Peter realized that he had just done the very thing that Jesus had foretold. The one thing that Peter had insisted that he would never do. He had disowned his beloved master. RP Kids, what are some ways that we deny Christ in our daily lives today? Many of us, if not all of us, would say that we love Jesus with all our hearts. Yet, as we are quiet in the presence of others about his goodness towards us. When we fail to pray, when we don't help others, when we fail to live a Christ-like life, we deny Christ and all that he has done for us. But there is good news. Even in Peter denying Christ three times, he was forgiven and Christ will forgive us too. At the end of the story, Jesus returned and asked Peter three times, Do you love me? Just as Peter had denied Jesus three times, Jesus now gave him the opportunity to show his love three times before others. Jesus forgave Peter for his denial and restored him. RP kids, this will apply to our life as well. We can ask God daily to forgive us just when we do things that are not pleasing to him. And he will forgive us just like he did Peter. We can also apply this to how we treat others. When we feel that we have been wrong, we should forgive others. Just like Christ forgives us, when we cannot forgive, we bottle up the anger and hurt inside. Over time, it builds, which causes us to suffer. Let's do a small science experiment. To demonstrate this, the Ziploc bag represents us. The baking soda and vinegar represents the pain and the anger we hold inside when we do not forgive others. We have our vinegar that represents hurt. We have our baking soda that represents anger. And we have our water that represents pain. And our Ziploc bag that represents our body. Now let's do our demonstration. Number one, add a fourth a cup of warm water to a plastic Ziploc bag. Measure out three teaspoons of baking soda and dump it into the center of tissue. Fold up the tissue 
around the baking soda. Work quickly, drop the folded tissue into the bag and close it completely. If the reaction doesn't happen quickly, shake the bag to aggravate it and start the chemical reaction. <laughs> RP kids, we must learn to forgive others just as Jesus forgave Peter. And just as Jesus forgives you, please discuss the story with your family this week. And remember to mention that the main point of today's lesson, Jesus forgives you. Thanks, KK and Shonda. Such an amazing lesson. We would love for you to try today's experiment from today's lesson at home with your parents. Please make sure you have your parents' permission and supervision while performing this experiment. Instructions and supplies need to be found by clicking the link underneath the YouTube video. Make sure you discuss this lesson with your parents as you perform the experiment. RP Kids, thank you for joining us today. Before we leave, let's pray. Do you guys remember the prayer from last week? Let's say it again today. I want you to repeat the words of the prayer after me. Dear God, Dear God, I know that, I know that, I am not perfect. I am not perfect. And sometimes, and sometimes, I mess up. I mess up. But thank you. But thank you. For loving me. For loving me. Unconditionally. Unconditionally. For forgiving me. For forgiving me. And giving me another day. And giving me another day. To start again. To start again. Amen. 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 See you next week, RP Kids. Have a great week.